Welcome to LeapFrog BI Academy course CT150, Fact Components. In this course, we're going to define the fact component and then create a couple. We'll be working toward the same dimensional model created in BD110. Uh, so let's take a look at that. This is our simple model that we're working towards. We'll be creating this fact sales table. You can see that it has four dimensions that uh, it needs to have foreign keys pointing toward. Um, let's jump over to the data flow diagram and take a look at how we decide to load this table. So we have two paths here. One is the line item information or the sales order detail where we're ready to load now. We've already created this FA sales order detail, fact aggregate sales order detail, and we can go ahead and use that to load our uh, fact table. Now after we set up that load, we have a secondary load here on sales order header. And uh, this sales order header is um, going to update the location ID because the location ID comes from the header path. And there is a chance that the header gets updated asynchronously to the line items. So by doing this secondary pass, we can ensure that the facts will stay current. So this will be an accumulated snapshot fact table, meaning that um, at least one of the foreign keys will be able to be updatable, and that will be the location foreign key. All right, so let's um, jump over to LeapFrog BI. I've already uh, logged in here, and we're looking at the CT150 project. I've already created a couple of fact components here just to expedite this a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at, at um, how they're designed. So first of all, I'm going to just go ahead and set this to complete status, but we are sourcing information from FA sales order detail here. I'm working on the, the primary fact table, the real fact table, and we're going to create this or place this within our DW connection. Looking at the detail, you can see that I've set up three foreign key relationships here. I'm going to modify the foreign keys so we can look at the detailed definitions. First of all, the product foreign key. We're doing a left join here. Now typically we'll do a left join to our foreign keys. Um, if there is not a matched lookup, LeafFrog BI will automatically put a negative one in that foreign key value. And as long as the dimension has an unknown member, then that negative one will point to the unknown member in that, in that dimension. Uh, we have a very simple on clause here, it's just product ID equals product ID from the source of the fact over to the dimension key. There will be a constraint created here. Uh, this will be a check constraint. Leap probably I will create that for us. This uh, foreign key will participate in the primary key, meaning that when we load this, um, foreign key, oh, sorry, when we load this fact, uh, if there is a match across all primary keys, including this one, then LeapFrog BI will consider that to be the same fact. If there is not a match, then LeapFrog BI will create a new um, fact. Uh, the join order, this will be our first join, and we call this our product foreign key. Pretty much the same exact thing for location, except in location, this uh, foreign key needs to be updatable from that second pass. Uh, if we, if if that, if we did not set this to where it is updatable, in other words, it doesn't participate in the primary key, then if the territory changed, the um, primary key would change, and that would cause a new fact to get generated, and that's not what we want. We don't want to actually update this foreign key. So we've set it that way. And promotion is um, pretty much the same as the first. Uh, we have, we're joining on our special offer ID. We've created our foreign key name for, um, as a foreign key promotion. Okay, so the um, join on expressions on all three of those are very simple. Just one field uh, comparisons gives us our Boolean output to be used in the on clause. Uh, let's jump down to the field list here. I set up this sales order detail ID to be a degenerate dimension by simply making it non-nullable and adding it to the primary key. 
So by doing that, it will participate in the primary key, meaning that that field um, will be merged on, or will be, uh, it will be um, part of what is used to determine if a record exists or does not exist. I'm also including the sales order ID here. That's going to make it a little easier for us to um, update that foreign key location from the sales order header in a moment. Then I've just cleaned up all the fields out, or the included fields to be just a few measures that I want to include here. Then I have a couple of foreign keys down here in my field list. Now I've just named these foreign key by taking the field name and typing in FK underscore order date. I don't want to do the lookups to my date dimension because I'm using a smart date um, in the style 112, which is year, month, day, for year, 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 month, month, day, day. So what I did is I took the order date that was coming from my source and just did a convert to style 112 that could sit in the right format as a string and then convert it back to an int. And then I used that int and just called it my foreign key. That's typically um, the way that I like to handle dates. Okay, so we're all set here. Uh, let's um, take a quick jump back over to our data flow diagram. We just talked about this guy here, so we can set it to be created. And now let's go take a look at this one, sales order header. This one's even simpler. So the sales order header, again, we're loading this into our DW. This is sourced from FA order header. And all we did here, first of all, is we set up our load options. And in our load options, we said this is going to load an existing table. It's that fact table we just talked about, which is called fact sales order detail, when we're not going to be in inserting new records. We're only updating existing records. We created a foreign key here to location, pretty much exactly the same way we did in our, uh, our real fact table, the primary fact table, just by joining on territory ID to the location uh, dimension. But we set this to be not part of the primary key here as well, just like we did before. Then we have one field here, which is a degenerate. We have it set to be not nullable and part of the primary key. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we have our join expression here. So now when this component runs, it's going to merge into this table, fact sales order detail, on the primary keys, which is just sales order ID at this point. And then it's going to update any other fields if it finds that sales order ID. So it's going to update our foreign key location. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. All right, so that gets us back over to our data flow diagram. We can mark this guy, create it now. And um, that takes care of the fact component. We'll see you in the next course.